These carrots are getting a second chance. They're surplus, and while some of us may think... But if you have a little extra, that's a little more profit. Not necessarily true. We sell it to processors, but they won't take extra carrots from us if they've reached their budget limit. When there's an excess, it's virtually useless because we cannot sell it. Leaving farmers with few options. We would destroy the crop, you plow it under. We put our ultimate effort into it, and if we do too good a job, the, the extra effort is kind of wasted. It, it gives you kind of a very empty feeling. In this uh, vegetable growing area, that's typical. Typical for farmers, but startling news to Jim Shoreman when he first heard of it at a farm luncheon. Jim literally dropped his fork when he heard this. It was uh, an enormous amount of food, and uh, we're looking for sources of food all the time. As food resource manager at Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin, Jim needs to find enough food to feed growing numbers of hungry families. A lot of the, our clientele are working families, but at the end of the month, they aren't making it. Second Harvest Food Bank supplies food pantries in 16 counties, like this mobile pantry in Marshall, Wisconsin. You guys ready? There's a lot of people that really depend on something like this. I get $16 in food stamps. You get a candy or a cheese? It helps a whole lot. I got laid off, and then a few months later, my wife got laid off. Whoa, two people laid off, it was just like, oh. Two big bags or one big bag and two little bags? I travel to go to different food pantries just to have food for the children. It's not going to get cheaper to feed a family. How you doing today? Well, they're having to make difficult choices. Some days, they say, Dad, you going to eat? I said, no, you eat. I'll be okay. It was astonishing to Jim that food was being destroyed. This is a godsend. This is a gift. This is an opportunity. But few others saw it that way. I can't just pick my carrots and put them on a truck and expect to get rid of them. It doesn't work that way. After seven, eight, ten days, they're, they're no good anymore. And farmers don't have the extra time to harvest food for no clear purpose. Many of these people at this time of year are working almost 24 hours a day. It grips you, it gets a hold of you and say, hey, I've got this food out here that's very nutritious. Why can't we get it to the proper people? That same question had long troubled UW-Madison crop production expert Jed Cahoon. When you go out and look at a field and uh, calculate on the back of a napkin or in your mind how many people that could possibly feed, it's amazing. Six rows, so through two beds at a time they can have. Knowing the potential just made the situation even more frustrating. Children are going to bed not knowing where their next meal is going to come from. I have someone I have to take care of, and I can't on my own. I'm a sister. Thinking about children that uh, are in a situation where they're hungry is an awful thought for a parent. And then during my day job, I watch crops being grown and sometimes uh, in overabundance. We need to better connect the pieces of the puzzle from the field to the food bank. And the final pieces of the puzzle fell into place at that farm luncheon when Jim met Jed. And we became friends real quick. Jim knew food banks and Jed knew farmers. And that's where we started with Field of Food Bank that day. To get excess food from the fields to the food bank, they'd need buy-in from farmers. So Jed started making the rounds. He said, wouldn't it be nice if we could utilize those and give them to some people that really need the food? And I said, absolutely. It would mean Farmer Miller's surplus carrots would be eaten, not wasted. But you have to eat your vegetables first. Yeah. OK. We know there's a need out there where kids are going to bed hungry at night. And if we can supply food to somebody, so be it. Farmer Paul Miller was in, but they all knew that wouldn't be enough. We don't have transportation. And how would they store fresh produce? Some of the food pantry partners of the food banks that we work with may be open only one or two times a month. I can't tell a snapping plant to stop growing until we're ready to be open. 
It just happens and we need to capture it when it happens. Getting something into a can is ideal. We can't do it ourselves. We gotta put some kind of a program together. They called the program simply what it would be, field to food bank. What they were dreaming of was a network of farms tied to a complex distribution chain with multiple partners. We need the right amount of trucking. We need the right amount of food processing. You need a lot of people to contribute a lot of money or sacrifice some money to put this all together. And that's a hard thing to ask somebody to take it out of their pocket and give it to somebody else. But it's a harder thing to stand by and watch people go hungry. Need in the past three years has increased by 81%. That's huge. And the supply hasn't kept pace. Sources of food we've relied on in the past, they've pretty much leveled out. Well, we have to look for new sources. Could a program like Field to Food Bank be the answer? If not... It would be very, very difficult for us to obtain that much food. Six twenty ounces. Okay, right. so count, count me boxes. Though this mobile pantry doesn't officially open until 3 p.m., that's yogurt. People have been lined up for hours. Without them, we don't know what we would do. A lot of them, even with the food pantry, scrape to get by. My kids have never been hungry. We've been blessed in that way, but. I can't stand the idea of thinking that there are kids at other kitchen tables that don't have enough food to fill their stomach. That's an awful thought. And if there's anything I can do from my training and background to help end that, that's what I'm committed to doing. That's why UW-Madison horticulture professor Jed Cahoon teamed up with farmers and other allies to test an idea. Would it be possible to move excess food from the field to food banks using just a network of volunteers? The answer seems to be yes. If you had told me two years ago that we would capture almost a half million pounds of food just by testing the system. He might not have believed you. And farmer Paul Miller was pretty skeptical too. I, mean, I said, is this gonna work? If we put this all together, it's gonna to be an amazing feat. And then I was very surprised when it materialized. I thought, boy, it's a slam dunk. I've never seen anything like that. It's based on multiple layers of generosity. You helped each other out. Starting at the field, we've had seed donated. The growers, of course, have been very generous in providing land, labor. We had trucking companies involved and can producers involved. They process our crops. Uh, in a lot of cases, they're harvesting the crops all the way through to the food banks and their volunteers that then distribute this food. Cahoon structured the system to mirror the traditional food network, going from the field to processing plants to people. But instead of grocery stores, this path would lead to food banks and pantries. It's just amazing to me the human generosity that's been involved in this. A lot of people contributed dollars. Maybe they felt like I did. Why waste this product? We are very, very fortunate as a food bank to have this partnership with the University of Wisconsin. Now that the program is underway and things are running smoothly, they almost make it look easy. It isn't easy. It isn't easy. Agriculture isn't easy to begin with. This is not a single person. This is people working in partnership among multiple communities and interests. The common cause keeps them all motivated. Ultimately, we're all in it to end hunger, and that's a high bar to uh, cross. It's just something that I feel good about doing. Uh, one semi-load of carrots out of a thousand that we probably produce in a year's time is not a significant number, but it's gonna fill somebody's belly some night for dinner, and that's what makes me feel good. All those carrots, and peas and corn from all those farmers add up. In its pilot year, Field to Food Bank added 450,000 pounds of food into the system. That's a lot of cans. But not enough for the Field to Food Bank team. In their second year, they're raising the bar, expecting to more than double the output. We're gonna bring in more than a, a million pounds. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We can teach other food banks. My hope is we can have this approach adopted in other parts of the country 
So the possibilities, I think, are endless. What kind of veggies do you like best? Celery and broccoli, yeah. And the whole family eat vegetables every night. They're healthy. She loves carrots and she loves broccoli and all kinds of vegetables. Still help mommy put her bags together? It is just wonderful to see that there are people out there that are willing to help and share what they have. I'm an older farmer. Uh, when I grew up, of course, you share what you had with your neighbors. If they were wanting for something, the first thing you did was give them what they needed. You, you helped each other out. They're not in it for recognition. They're the kindest people I've ever met. Him and others like him are doing something really, really great. It's gratifying, but uh, I'm motivated to do more. <laughs> I know that there are so many more hungry people out there that you can't let yourself become comfortable with, uh, this is enough. You need to drive it forward, knowing that we're a long way from ending hunger. But he knows it's also important to celebrate each victory. When it comes down to each can is important. That's certainly true in this line, where the Field to Food Bank idea touches lives one can at a time. I try not to waste any of it that's given. Want them guys to know, keep it up, and they're doing a good job. It's very gratifying to know that we've put food on the table somewhere. It is important, so that's kind of why we do it. <laughs>